morning everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Thank you for joining me today. Today's reading is going to be, I'm not sure the title yet, but it's going to be based on love that's coming in. And it may already be a relationship that's started. It may be somebody that you know already, or perhaps you haven't met them. So we're going to look at different things in this spread, um, or these spreads. Your usual type, the new person coming in, um, look at how you might recognise them. and. Uh, Hopefully, eventually, look at how you can pull this person towards you or make the best of the situation. So it's going to be quite, I'm assuming, a longish type of spread, because I'm not working today. Um, well, we'll just get going. Pan number one, pan number two, pan number three. <laughs> Started. There's a lot of cards here, so I'm going to possibly talk my way through each pile and explain what I'm thinking. This is the pile for your usual type. This is the pile for who's possibly coming into your life. This is more a case of how they're going to come into your life, and this is how you can make the best of the situation. Quite complicated for me to read, so I'm going to start shuffling through. On this side and this side, I have the feeling that your usual type is going to be very similar to this person that's coming in or is already there. It's as if you recognise them. You know when you float your eyes across the room and you automatically hone in on somebody as being your usual type. And I don't even know what it is a lot of the time. Sometimes it can be just something as simple as an eyebrow line. It's really weird. <clears throat> but this person who may be your usual type possibly could be somebody who... I'm wondering if you have fallen for people in the past who are on the rebound from situations, possibly going through um, times in their life where you possibly both could be going through times in your life where you've met and you've recognised something in each other and it's almost been a helping hand type of feeling or you've recognised something in each other that's just felt very similar and it's turned into attraction and sex quite quickly, I'm thinking. There's still a 10th house here with the Hierophant, so there's still that traditional fear with regards to this relationship, which I'm, is, I'm getting over here too, because you've got Capricorn and you had something else that made me think that. Capricorn with the ninth house, I think. The Hierophant with Capricorn in the ninth house over here gave me the similar feeling of somebody who is looking for answers, but quite happy to take it, quite a traditional step to get there. The 10th house here with Venus made me think of a similar feel of somebody who is quite open to new things but not quite conventional yet open, difficult. I'm try I know what I'm thinking but I'm not going to be able to get it out of my mouth. Hold on. Okay, let me just go one part at a time. Your usual type possibly could be somebody who is going through a rebound situation or through a situation where they're just coming out of one relationship, not really looking for somebody, then find you. The 10th house and Venus is making me think of somebody who's quite conventional, but also quite open to new things. Somebody who likes a page of pen, a king of pentacles here, Capricorn feel here, very similar. Somebody who likes life to be just so. It's somebody who's quite traditional, and I mean in the best sense as in, if you celebrate Christmas, it's somebody who likes the whole shebang at Christmas, likes the tree up, likes the proper dinner, not somebody who just lets it go, burns the dinner and doesn't, doesn't think much about it. So that's the type of feeling I'm getting, but with the Five of Cups here and the Devil, and the Helping Hand with the Hierophant here, makes me think that this person may possibly come into your life when you're helping each other out, and then it turns into a sexual relationship. There's something to do with love and convention and loss here. So that's what I'm picking up there. It could be more than that. I don't know. I'll come back to it in a minute. This pile feels really similar. You've got the Queen of Cups where you've got Venus here. Softness, sweetness, giving, gentle, um, looks good, feels good. 
liked being good. The Capricorn here, Tenth House, same thing to me. It's that conventional feel, it's that work orientated. You've got the King of Pentacles here to back that up. It's somebody who goes to work, works hard, comes home and expects life to be straightforward, honest and real. So I'm getting a really grounded feel here. But you've got the higher from the ninth house here too, and this is really interesting, because you've got this feel of somebody who is quite traditional, but also can put that into their beliefs and how they see the world. So there's that, I don't get a really conventional state, conventional feel about here, somebody who's made their mind up about religion and beliefs and is sticking with it. It's somebody who has just fallen into what would be deemed as quite a traditional viewpoint with regards to where you live and your probably your usual religious inklings that you have in your part of the world I don't really know that but there's that feeling that they take on the tra traditional religious beliefs of their fathers or their mothers that type of feeling you know somebody who enjoys life just being so doesn't question things too much just chooses their religion with this Venus and this kind of cups for their and makes the best of it. Chooses their religion to make the best of themselves. That's probably what I'm trying to say. The King of Pentacles card here, the Seven of Wands, just so. I think your person's quite fixed. I think the people that you tend to be drawn to tend to be quite fixed. There's a passionate feel to this, so I don't know whether you've, you like the security of somebody who's going to be there, quite solid person, and you may have been drawn together in the past through relationships. My camera on, yeah. Relationships that, uh, what on earth am I wearing? <laughs> oh my God, hold on. You put tops on for warmth, and then you put on something woolly for more warmth. <laughs> oh my God. Um... How was I saying then? You, yes, okay, so this pentacle feel is a traditional feel of you looking for stability within a person, somebody who's stable, somebody who's not too all over the place. You want somebody to, that you can, feels going to, that's going to be there when things fall apart. And I wonder whether you have actually, one of you or both of you have been in some sort of life transition where you've fallen together here and it's ended up in a sexual relationship. Here it's the same feeling. It's the same feeling of somebody who is solid but not stiff. So I don't know whether you have lots of earth in you, um, maybe water as well, but there's a, there's a real feeling of wanting somebody to be there and be solid and be grounded rather and this carries on here actually how you're going to meet your next person or how you may have met them already okay i'm going to go into this and i will then i'll start going back to here now these cards here for the Lenneman cards i've only just started looking at Lenneman cards and they've actually quite shocked me a bit um for some readings i did when i first had them so i'm just learning these cards here and they're really good for not so much like philosophical or emotional but just like Real events, anyway. These cards here make me think of meeting somebody in the workplace or meeting somebody when you're doing some repetitive task. It could be something like labouring, I don't know. Or somebody comes into your life with regards to this Hierophant card here, which is very much a helping hand, who offers you a solution to something. Somebody who comes into your life and is working with you in a, something that's grounded, but is somehow giving you a solution to something with this key here. You know, with the stars here as well, it could be something to do with night shifts, it could be something to do with tranquils. Tran 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 There's always one, every word in every part. I can't say tran tranquil. 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 Or just some doorway opening, just something new beginning. Shifting, moving on quietly and quickly. So, okay. Bear with me here. If it's not that, these little mice here, it could, this could be teamwork, something small, perhaps anxiety, and then some doorway opening, and something that offers peace. So, I'll give you the more practical situation that I'm thinking here. You meet somebody who is possibly part of a workforce, possibly part of a team that you um, work with, or somebody you work with in work. <laughs> work with in work. 
They offer you a solution to something and it just feels right. It just feels good and it's almost like peace. It's somebody who comes into your workplace and, you know, when you've jammed the photocopy up, this is a small version of something that could be larger. Somebody that, you know, you've jammed the photocopy up, this man or woman comes in and then helps you with it. Photocopy is a small version. It could be something huge. It could be something, somebody who just comes into your workplace and is added to part of your normal team. An addition. It could be something to do with a relationship here, where there's anxiety, and then with a the key here, they offer you some, you or vice versa, actually. It could be this situation as a whole. Some sort of anxiety, some sort of relationship at the fall into pieces. With the key here, there's a helping hand offered, and then that actually turns into a relationship, and that, then the peace is brought with regards to that. Mm, there was another one I thought of. I don't know. The whole situation with this first pile makes me think of somebody who is solid, somebody who is quite earthy in some way. They may not have earth in their chop, but there's that feeling of being very grounded and offering you something. And then there's a release from a tension, and then there's like a new doorway that opens. Which ninth house here as well. The the practical Capricorn you feel I'm getting from this, but this is that past relationships is could be something to do with almost nurturing a part in your life that feels or their life that feels as if it's ungrounded with regards to love or personal relationships right okay the best thing to do to bring this person into your life for you is to hierophant which has really sort of i felt like banged on about this here and here there's something to do here with a building or a work situation or a big institution or something traditional like a church or a church meeting or a organisation. There's something you need to do to make sure that you are getting your face seen with regards to a institution or a work situation or a you know like a church meeting. It's an institution where there's a lot of people involved. It could be a work building. And then there's using your know-how, seeing behind the scenes, seeing what's going on. You're probably aware of this person already, possibly. And the magician here is using, for a magnetic pile, to have the high priestess and the magician here, I wouldn't really be worrying too much about your magnetism. The magician knows exactly, well, both of these people know exactly what they're doing and out of the two cars out of all the pack i would guess these two know how to pull people towards them when the time is right the magician uses it more in, in an internal way and then pushes out it out externally they know what they're good at and they know how to bring things towards them the high priestess knows what she is good at whether you're he or she and then almost this one is somebody that does something practical in the outside world by knowing what they're good at. The high priestess does something internally and then it's almost like you can't see this but it's happening in the ethers. You're sucking this person towards you. That type of feeling. So I would say get yourself out into whichever situation. If you know this person already, you've got to get yourself seen. You've got to be out there in this building, in this institution or circulating in some way to get close to this person rather than just thinking about it. The magician the high priestess make me think that you know what you're meant to be doing. It's almost a case with this like, little mice here, an anxiety of not actually levelling up with yourself. Uh, and you're almost like you're denying who you are in some way. Right, I'm going to start summing this up now because I've sort of like walked my sort of light, walked my way through this. Okay, right, still early morning here. I get the feeling that you have met somebody in the past or your usual type is somebody who is grounded but quite loving. There's somebody who you may have helped who is very good at helping you and the relationship may possibly... Um, have formed from being there 
in situations that have been hard, being there for each other. When th with a five of cups here, when something has fallen down, fallen through, there's been that helping hand, that practicality, and then the attraction has fallen with the Venus and the devil here and turned to something sexual. The new person coming to life gives me a very similar feeling. There's not that so, there's not the feeling of the helping hand so much, but still somebody who is very practical, very down to earth, but still quite loving. I don't know whether you are drawn to that person who is sweet and there rather than sweet and running off, going partying and um, chasing other people. There's a, there's a real solid feel, but there's a, you know, as if you want somebody there, you want somebody solid, there's a real earthy feel about this. Um, and I wonder whether you're going to meet this person either something to do with um, like a workforce. Um, a group situation, which seems to be coming through stronger, actually, when you've got the Hierophant here. Possibly night shifts or just somebody new coming into your workplace with the key here. Somebody offering, offering a solution with regards to how to possibly create something new in your workplace. The Magician, the Hierophant here, makes me think of buildings. All the way through, that's made me think of buildings. Tradition and buildings, I don't know. I keep flicking to 12 house, house things. I don't even know where that's coming from. So I keep saying institutions, and that's what makes me keep thinking of 12 house. I don't, nothing, to, oh, priestess. Maybe. Um, I wouldn't worry about how to bring this person towards you because apart from being out there and being seen, but the Hierophant here is quite, again, a very practical card. You're not going to find this person sitting in your bedroom dreaming, <laughs> looking at your phone at astrology charts. You're going to actually need to get out there with this person because this particular person, I'm trying to stop saying person, because I've said it a few times, is somebody who may not be interested in that type of thing and would need somebody else to come to them on a level that is concrete in the material world. This is not somebody who writes poetry. This is, some, this is not somebody who daydreams in their bedroom. This is somebody that gets up at 9 o'clock every morning or is in work before 9 every morning. And then you've got these quite spiritual cards at the end, to how to, which is strange, how to pull them towards you. But it's as if you know what you're doing with regards to reading behind the scenes and then you can still bring this out into a practical world so you know and all that sort of you know like watching tarot cards and astrology there's that awareness there with you that is almost ready to recognize this person and actually do something about it a magician so these two cards make me think that you may be a little bit more internal with regards to how you understand relationships, but you're also capable of the magician of bringing this person towards you and being practical about it. Right, pile number one. I'm going to stop there. But I do get the general feeling that there's a practical helping feeling with past relationships with you as if you've helped somebody in the past and then got closer to them or it has to into a relationship where there's a soothing feel about it but you're there for each other and then this person is still that soothing sweetness but this one feels a little bit more tired this one feels a little bit more free and easy you've got seven of wands here which isn't, isn't I don't understand this card to be honest but it's somebody flying, they've still got, they're still caught there in their parachute, but they're still moving. So this one's got a slight more breezy feeling to it, but a very similar feeling to it. And then there's, um, I think you're going to meet in a group situation. I, it comes out quite strong in a traditional group situation, like a work situation. But you, you will just draw this person towards you. It's almost as if you recognise them straight away, if you probably know who it is already. Right then, so you don't need to change anything really with regards to being um, there in the right place, the right time, is just be yourself, know who you are, know how much you've learned, know how things tumble, and then just be there, be open with this person, because I think that you're on the right track here. Right, panel one, I'm going, oh my God, that is so fast. Right, panel number one, thank you for joining me, um, I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope to see you again, bye.
right then pile number two I'm just going to go into I'm going to walk, walk, walk my way through so it may be a little bit stilted to begin with hopefully it'll get better fingers crossed um, on this side here is the type of person you normally fall for this side here is a person who is new in your life or coming into your life this is possible scenarios for how they may come in how you may recognize the event or the situation and down here yeah I've got a huge part here is for how to draw this person towards you, how to make the best of yourself in this situation. Right, I wonder whether the type of person that you normally fall through with regards to these, fall through, fall for, um, with regards to these cars is somebody who is quite passionate and intense, somebody who has, I'm going to say, a strong sex drive. We've got the chariot, the lovers, the queen of wands. That's quite fiery, that's quite forceful. There's that energy of... Um, almost pushing a little bit to get what they want so they might be quite quite a strong character the lover's card here and the three of swords is somebody who I'm guessing falls into a relationship this isn't you this is them I think falls into a relationship um you know a full-blown ah, what am I trying to say there's an intensity and there's a drive and there's this all or nothing feel that with the Scorpio in the eighth house is it's very Pluto. It's very much sorry, I'm just trying to find the words here. Because there's quite a bit here to actually pick out and I quite like it. I just don't know how to say it. The eighth house is very passionate. It's very all or nothing. It's very sexual. It's life or death. It's beginning and end. And this person that you have fallen for in the past or the people that you're drawn to in the past are, um, they don't like grey. It's either black or white. It's either you're either in a relationship or you're not in a relationship. There's no half-heartedness here. Um, the chariot is somebody who's very intense, very sort of driven and only has probably one direction. The lover's card here gives a sexual feeling with Scorpio card. So it makes me interpret it in a more sort of intense sexuality feel here. The Queen of Wands again is feisty, fiery, forward moving, forward thinking and can be very sexual too. The Three of Swords makes me think with life and death here. It's almost... Either the relationship has been, um, I'm going to say doomed, I don't mean doomed. It's almost like a relationship that perhaps couldn't be or was so intense, it almost, it was like a forest fire. What's that Lloyd Cole song, like a forest fire? I don't know, I can't remember it. It burns itself out because it's so intense. So the type of person you normally fall for is like a forest fire to me. This feeling of intensity, sexuality, drive, vigour, but then it hurts. I don't know whether that rings true for you. The type of person that's coming into your life is a complete opposite to this. There's a real fun-loving, sweetness, softness, nurturing, nourishing, heartfelt, still sexy, but there's a real connection that is actually making, I can feel it in my heart back when I'm saying it. That cold thing in my chest. There's just that feeling of, oh, I've got to show you the cards. Okay, these are the cards you've got. I don't know if you can see them, but it's definitely worth seeing. The Sacred Heart is something that I think is more like a karmic feel and a connection. It's like a south node feel where you meet somebody and you just know they feel right because you're at ease with them. The Prince of Cups card here, the Prince of Cups is very romantic. It's almost like immaturely and um, romantic. And, you know, and I'm not going to knock that because it makes the world go round. It's a type of thing that, um, you know, you just fall in love and you don't care whether you're meant to be with them, whether they're available. It's real sort of rose-tinted goggles. And that feeling, and I don't mean glasses. The fifth house here is... Falling in love is a recreation. So once again, it's that feeling of, I don't care, I'm going there anyway. Serez gives it that nurturing feel again, that sort of, um, I won't hurt you, I'm still going to love you. Princess of Cups again, which is the Page of Cups. The King of Wands gives it that more mature sexuality feel to it. So there's a real, I would say, South Node feel of recognition, of love, of this person isn't going to hurt you. 
but they're not it's not got a wet feeling because you've got the king of wands right in the middle here it's more a case of a sweetness and a recognition it's a type of person that you dream about before you see them and you always get on well there's a sweetness there and there's a vulnerability that no, there's not vulnerability is the wrong word it's lack of vulnerability it's somebody you open up to and it just feels right to open up to them right how may you meet this person <laughs> The fish card here, I'll say what I'm thinking because I'm looking at these cards here because I think they're really good for situations. It's got something to do with like sales or exchange or purchases. So there's something to possibly to do with shops so, or export, import with the water and the fish. And there's a lot of water here as well. So it very much could be, you know, something to do with water or sailing or swimming you know you, you, you automatically think of like normal situations like you may meet them in the shop but you know it could be anything it could be you could um, um, enroll in a sailing course or it could be somebody you meet with sales at the fish market there's just so many different scenarios but I'll just give you some impressions that I'm thinking about as I'm going through them With a book card here, somebody self-employed to do with um, international trade, somebody freelance, something to do with positive opportunities to do with work, or somebody that's in and out quick, in and out work quick. Sales, positive opportunities, self-employment, bear with me. Do the international trade, maybe freelance, maybe a consultant, somebody who's quick in and out. Okay, so this person that's coming into your life, um, this person would have come in and basically you would have known they were there straight away. This person, you know they're there, but it's a, I can talk to you. This person, you possibly, or the people in your life, there possibly could have been that frozen rabbit syndrome where you don't really know what to say and it feels uncomfortable because the um, pull is intense this person there's still a sexuality there but it's different there's a feeling that they are you're one of the same a real feeling of being with somebody that you're meant to be with and it's like a i'm trying not to make this dull because i don't want to say brother sister relationship but i know what i mean it's like somebody you can talk to really easy it just feels right and I'm not saying it crosses, because sometimes, you know, this kind of thing is really the type of thing you can make a really sexy book out of. This type of thing is just something you want to live with, because it just feels, you get the same out of it in the end, but the beginning is easier. And then this person is going to come into your life through some sort of situation where there's possibly an exchange of money. This person could be employed, so it could be a work situation again, or somebody that comes in to help you, or somebody that... You could even meet them abroad, studying abroad. There's a quick in and a quick out. So this person could come into the room and go out again. They could come in to help you to do with something financial. I don't know that. I'm going to go back to that. The way that you can draw this person towards you is to soften yourself. If you've been hurt in past relationships, it's time to let that go now because you're not going to open yourself up to these new people coming in. Because you've got the Queen of Cups, you've got the High Priestess and the Page of Wands. The, the difference in these relationships here with the High Priestess in the middle makes me think that you're supposed to be using your intuition to know what you want and to leave behind um, what you don't want because you're just going to pull that towards you again if you don't. The Queen of Cups makes me think that this is softness because this pile is so much softer than this pile. And the Page of Wands gives me that childlike feeling that we've, thought of, that we've talked about before um, of... Being child like yourself again, it's almost like reverting back to a child yourself to bring this person towards you. It's an innocence in this pile. That's probably the word I'm looking for. It's an innocence in this pile. There's a passion in this pile, but there's not an innocence here. It's almost a, a case of enjoying the passion, but actually deep down what you're doing is, is shredding each other. You're shredding each other to um, boost your egos in some way, possibly. There's a... And the eighth house Scorpio, absolutely fantastic. There's passion, there's love. Um, but in the end, it's, you've got to face up whether you're doing it for the moment or whether you're doing it to fill a hole. And I don't mean that in that sense. I mean it in the sense, you know, we've all got vulnerabilities in our life and sometimes we can actually pull people towards us 
that make them worse because we're meant to face up to it. That may be, may be something to do with these past relationships where you've had somebody there who has woken you up to something inside yourself that you weren't quite happy with. That's probably where the Three of Swords comes in. And that's why they're in your life. My tummy's rumbling. They must have been brought into your life to make you realise that you weren't self-contained with regard to that situation where they, that it hurt, that those swords went in. That you were looking for something from somebody else for some sort of nourishing and not yourself. This person is almost like a breath of fresh air after crawling through a hot desert. No, no, they're like a glass of water after falling through a hot desert because they love you for exactly who you have grown to be. This person was still... Um, you were still young, possibly. I don't mean in age, but still young when this relationship hit you, possibly. Um, you know, it could be just in your mind. And it's, they've been able to nip a little bit out of you, which you weren't ready to give. This relationship here is almost like, thank you for the hard work relationship. You know, it's just something that, and, I, and I'm going to say it again, there's a passion here, there's a passion here. Take this one every time. This one allows you to play with life. It allows you to move with this person. This one allows you to have the passion, but there's still the caring and the love, and you deserve it. So don't think that you, you if you're used to this type of relationship, Move on. That's just, move on. High Priestess here is awareness to me with regards to these two pounds. It's awareness of not having to take that road anymore and move on to this person. It's as if you can get stuck in a rut and um, accept the same person over and over again. It's like the type of person or the type of... I can't remember, I'm thinking of these like Taui programs you get on and they, oh you know, you know like those dating programs and the girls are there and they're saying, it's just, it was girls I've seen, I don't know if it is men, men are the same I'm sure, um, and the girls have said I'm looking for a lad and I'm looking for somebody who's going to play me about and I'm thinking why, why would you do that, there's no room to play you with your, no room to play with yourself, I didn't mean like that, there's no room to play with yourself in life, when you're so busy making somebody else grow up you're not growing up together this relationship here makes me think that you are maturing together and I'm maturing is a really horrible word but I um because it takes this has, still has fun in it it's the type of person who takes you out with them rather than you watching them go out with their mates this type of person wants to have fun with you I have this like image in my head of, and I know it's because it snowed here last week, which is very rare, of going, um, the weather changing, and you're both getting in the car, going somewhere together, like, you know, I'm like thinking of snowboarding because my kids get in, thinking of snowboarding, mum. That type of thing, and you're rolling around in the snow, you're falling over, and you're actually laughing together, and it's fun, and it just feels good, rather than, them getting in their car to go and see their girlfriends or their boyfriends and leaving you, be, you know, that, that that may have been this. This makes me feel totally different. So I am actually getting a bit boring here. So I'm just going to say, you've got this inside you already. You've got to put on the softness. You've got to put on the awareness of what you actually want from a relationship. The page of wands makes me think as well. There's like pages here twice. It's like a new beginning. It's like a nurturing, a new type of relationship within you. And this relationship is possibly going to come towards you through something to do with study, something to do with like shops or exchange or purchases or something to do, I don't know here, international self-employment, trade, freelance, somebody consulting you. I don't know, it could be studying abroad. The fish is financial. It's finances, it's like a lucky turn in finances. The book is studying. And then this person comes into your life and out again and in and out and in and out. And you meet them and you think, oh, is that the person that they've got? Is that the person they've got? But you'll know this person by the fact you just feel at ease with them rather than actually feeling as if you can't get a word out with the past relationship, possibly. 
It's almost as if you need to draw a line in your relationship. You're not looking for that anymore. You're not looking for that person that makes you... I wonder if you've mistaken that uncomfortable feeling of not being able to talk in front of somebody. It's like intense attraction. <laughs> this person and because you can talk with them and you can laugh with them almost feels like is that correct when the answer is yes right plan number two i feel like i am actually going on too much here so i'm gonna finish you off with saying your new relationship that is possibly coming towards you is going to be beautiful it's going to be something that just makes you feel right it's going to feel like all the past hurts not all the past, I can't guarantee that, but as if you're growing inside yourself and it's going to feel like a healing quality towards you, to you. The Queen of Cups here makes me think that it's just going, you're going to have to accept it and draw it towards you by being it before it comes. You have to be open, you have to be giving, you have to be gentle, you have to be sweet. There's no harshness that can come out of you if you want to pull this towards you. There's awareness, yes, but there's an innocence and a vulnerability and a sweetness that you have to give out for that person to match you. And that's when you'll draw them in. They'll re you'll recognise each other because there'll be no need to have boundaries, barriers, um, feisty, oversexed arguments that, you know, I mean, you might get that, but it won't be through an argument. You just get that anyway because it just feels right. Right, panel number two, I'm going to finish there. Thank you very much for sharing your time with me today um, and I hope to see you again. Bye. Right then, I'm going to go straight into this without even knowing what I'm saying. So I'm just going to start. So this person over here or these people over here are your past relationships, the type of person you're normally attracted to. Over here is the type of relationship or the relationship that you may already be in it actually or you may, um, this person is coming towards you. It's the type of your next relationship but only if you use these qualities to bring this towards you. That type of feeling, now it's not a threat that, wasn't it? It's not a case of own, not only, but to bring this person, person towards you, um, I put these cards down hoping that it would give you an inkling on how to make the best of yourself. It wasn't threat, threatening you to this or you're not getting anyone. Um, right, let's get going. The type of person you possibly could have fallen for in the past may be what I would say the seventh house Sagittarius is going to put Gemini on the um, ascendant. So Gemini Sagittarius is somebody I would think who is somebody who could be quite playful, quite silly. Um, I'm thinking of Jake Dylan Hall here. Oh my gosh, let me think. Um, Quick-witted, charming, um, adventurous, somebody who likes to take people with them wherever they're going. It's, you know, they relate to people. I'm thinking Brad Pitt here as well and Jennifer Aniston, they're together, always travelling. Somebody who nurtures relationships through travelling, through pushing boundaries, probably somebody quite philosophical, but somebody who has a really good sense of humour, somebody who finds life funny. It's a type of person when they were a kid they would be rolling around laughing during all their lessons that type of feeling you know somebody who is silly but unless you are Sagittarius or Gemini sort of personality yourself then you could feel like they were rolling around without you you know that type of person like am I part of the joke or you know what's funny that type of feeling where you're not really that sure the reason I'm getting a negative feeling from this it's because you've got the Four of Cups. So I wonder if this person actually, or the people that, how you have into your life, had in your, excuse me, the people that came into your life actually gave you enough for you to feel like you were nurtured. It's as if they were so busy 
involved in their own lives and who what they were doing, where they were going, you know, where they were playing, where their next journey was, um, you know, where they were going out with their mates. I wonder whether you've got enough attention or felt like you did because you've got the nine of swords here, which makes me think that this per these people or the pe oh, this person, this people. I'm trying to think because it could be a particular person. It could be just a whole group of the type of person you normally attract. The Nine of Swords and the Four of Cups are anxiety and upset. And I'm thinking through feeling like whatever you offered was not the same as what they were getting elsewhere, which sounds really cruel. The Hierophant here is, with this card here, a helping hand. I wonder whether you felt like you were enough the past relationships, I wonder whether you felt like you were enough. Because this is a real playful air with you, the Four of Cups, you offering something and then being too busy to be too busy playing to take it out. The Nine of Swords is, I'm, I'm assuming it caused you upset. The Hierophant here is like a helping hand, as if you were trying to have something that was more traditional, more conventional than they were able to give you. The relationship that's coming next <laughs> into your life, you just love Jupiter people. You have still got this Jupiter feeling. I wonder whether you are drawn to that philosophical person who sees life on a big scale. Somebody who likes to talk about what's in the newspaper. Somebody who likes to discuss um, world events. Somebody who know, who does not that interested in personal things, who sees people as groups, who sees life as a whole, who stretches boundaries, who is forward thinking, philosophical, but still that feeling that you're still attracted to that person that plays, plays with life. But this is slightly changed. You, what you're getting this time, I would say, is an evolved, an evolved Sagittarius, because there's a playfulness there, um, but without the, the ability to commit or to realise what effect you're having on somebody else. With this card here, it's almost a bit sort of I'm going to say honed down, because you've got the fourth house here that actually brings it to a more personal level. You've got the high priestess here, which is more internal, and you've got the hermit here. So this is a Sagittarius who is more mature, somebody who realises the effect that they have on other people. The effect. They pull on what I would say is their higher mind, which is a really, I don't like using those words, but the Sagittarius people, they have access to things. And a bit like Neptune, parts of their brain that other, other people tend to not use it often. And the way that they function in the world, however annoying, <laughs> They are to you, because without doubt, Sagittarius, I, I have so many Sagittarius friends, they are brought in this world to try you, because they say directly exactly what they're thinking, they are very directed in what they want, and you, if you haven't got your boundaries, they are going to roll all over you, laughing as they do it. And I wonder whether you've been victim to that, <laughs> victim to my friends. And this time you're going to get the same type of person because I don't know where you've got Jupiter in your chart, but I wonder if it's the type of person that you're pulled towards. Actually, my mum has Jupiter conjunct her Venus and um, she's like Capricorn all the way through. And she married my dad. This is really personal. She married my dad and he was out every night in a really old fashioned relationship, uh, really lovely, lovely, smiley, happy man. Um, who was never there for her. And that's what it's making me feel. But this the man that you're going to get, or the woman who's coming into your life next, is going to have is going to be more mature. They're going to be the type of person who's probably more interested in world events. This person may have been, but it may have been more of just playing with life that was more interesting than this person still plays, but there's an awareness there inside themselves and what they want. There's a playfulness with the two of pentacles here as well. And it gives me that mutable feel as well, which you get with Sagittarius. That's quite dangerous, isn't it? I mean, you could get like, you know, Pisces. They change their mind so often. I mean, I change my mind all the time. I enjoy it. Um, but with they're so directed in what they're thinking. And that, you know, I, I know I do talk about, and it seems slightly insulting to Aries and Sagittarius all the way through my readings. It's because 
it's like a real love because I have so many Aries around me, so many Sagittarius, and it is like a love. But oh my God, they they make life bigger, they make life fun, and they make life exciting. But it's almost as if you can't. They don't slip by you, do they? They they are there, and you are enjoying yourself. But it's like you come back and you're like exhausted. What was I saying? Uh, talk about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> Not really. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, this person that you are drawn towards, you are drawn towards people who are bigger, who see the bigger picture, who play with life. You have had that in the past, but you've, I think it's made you feel left out. This is somebody coming into your life who is going to be the similar personality, playful, but more aware of... It's like they've grown up with this um, feeling of how to play, how to stretch boundaries, how to include everybody else, how to be the bigger person, and they do it really well, but they don't actually, it may not be part of them as a whole, just part of their aura. That time, I can't say it in a different way. They could have had, as I have, lots of people around them like that, but it may not be part of their makeup. But you still see it, because it's what they've... I'm trying to say they've grown up in a Jupiter household. Somebody who discusses the newspaper, somebody who knows about world events and somebody who actually goes out of their comfort zone to help people who have nothing to do with their immediate environment. They don't get anything from helping these people. They do it because that's who they are. That real sort of grandiose feeling of seeing the bigger picture and knowing your place in it. Yeah, that's it with that. Got this pile is... I could do it if I wanted to, but I'm too busy playing. This pile is far more there. Right, let's have a look to see how you this person could actually come into your life. There is, there is a feeling of the fourth house here, something to do with a family relationship possibly. If you work from home or whether you work in a family business, it's very possible with this that that could be something to do with how you meet this person. They could be, although they could be roommates. And with this home feeling here and this fourth house here, it could even be something to do with construction work. So you could meet somebody, oh yeah, somebody who could be a builder or, you know, somebody who comes to help you with your house or that type of feeling. The whip here is something repetitive. But to me with the fox here... There's something sexually charged about this meeting. I don't really know what it is. There's also a feeling of an employee or somebody you may report to in work. But it's got something sexually charged to it. There's even, I know a lady, I won't say any names, who had a reading, um, and if she's watching this pie on, a feeling of a police officer. That type of feel. Something repetitive, something that's sexually charged here. A home feeling. I'm, I'm going to tell you a picture in my head. And I'm, you know, I, I, sorry, I know I have to choose things that I know in my own life to make the picture clearer. So I don't want to rant on too much about, too much about myself. But there was once a friend I had who... We went on holiday and she met this person. This is what I'm trying to explain here is what it makes me think of. She met this person who was, you know, we were all friends together. She hadn't met him before. She was like a buddy from school. Um, so we were about, I don't know, 18, 19. And she met this guy who was friends of my boyfriends at the time. Boyfriends. <laughs> Oops. And they hated each other, absolutely hated each other on meeting. They were both fiery, both very Aries. Yeah, and they were just going. So this could be very much the part of how you fall into it. They were just going for each other. And it was uncomfortable to be with. And then we went out that evening. They met in the day, we went out that evening. Still, it was almost as if, oh my God, it was horrendous. It was, oh, what have we done? And then a couple of drinks down the track because of the fire inside them and this is what might, might happen they both disappeared into the bedroom and that evening and then all these porn mags came outside because she because the type of girl she was she was like i'm not at that they just she threw them outside the door within like a couple of seconds going to the bedroom 
And then that was it, and then they were married. They were married, I don't know, a year or two later. But the, the initial meeting was intense and charged, emotionally charged, sexually charged, and it was like makeup sex because they really argued all evening and made everybody else uncomfortable. So there could be something to do with that feeling here because this Sagittarius feeling here, although there's a maturity with this person here, but they're very much the initial meeting could be not getting off on a good start because the whip card here isn't really a pleasant card, but it is if it's to do with sexual tension. And the fox card here, again, is something to do that's slightly underhand, possibly. That's why I said about the police or um, we're having to report to somebody. Or an employee, something, um, you know, something that's not quite correct. I don't know. Anyway. How to bring this relationship towards you because it does seem as if you are, you know, you deserve this one after possibly having a few dodgy ones where you've actually not got back what you think you've put in. Possibly you, yeah, I don't think you have got back what you've put in. There's an air of defensiveness about you as if you're expecting the same to happen again. The Seven of Wands here is, these, both these cards make me think of being defensive, that you have an air of, you are the porn mag thrower. <laughs> that is you. You have this, I think you've got a feistiness inside you. I don't even know where it falls in your chart, but I wonder whether that's how the type of woman or the type of man that you pull towards you recognises that inside you and you quite like that. It's asking you to almost tone it down a bit, hone it down a bit. The Page of Pentacles here. Page of Pentacles here makes me think of being a little bit more steady with your energy, a little bit more... These make me think feisty, and the translation that the picture I've got in my head about that girl that I used to know made me think that the actual relationship could start off on quite a fiery note. It doesn't have to be arguments, but there's something that's quite contentious, and you're quite enjoying it because that's maybe how you like to relate to people because it is exciting. And then this page of pentacles here is almost calling you to hone it down. You can play with the energy, but not too much. You don't want the same person back. You want this more mature version back. Or more mature version, you know, to come in. This person's more reflective. Right then, let's sum you up pile number three. I wonder whether in the past you have had relationships where the person has been really good fun, but what I would term as emotionally immature, whether they have not been able to give you exactly what you feel like you've needed. You've been there, you've had fun with them, you know, there's been the draw there, but it's almost as if when you've needed them, they've not been there. The Hierophant, the Nine of Swords, the Four of Cups is somebody who's not accepting or not giving you what you need when you need it. And I'm not saying you need too much, I'm just saying that, you know, let's just say something horrific happened, um, like you, <laughs> it's not horrific, but you know, the type of coming out of a nightclub and your lift's gone, or your lift has gone off with somebody else, you can't get home, and you phone them, and they won't come and get you. It's that type of feeling, but very good at Daniel Cleaver. This is Daniel Cleaver. Daniel Cleaver from, what's that, for, oh, Bridget Jones I watched last week. That's This is Daniel Cleaver. It's the, it's the sexy man who is charming, but not there when you possibly need them. It doesn't have to be a man, it can be a woman, it doesn't make any difference. And um, with this card here, it's still sexy man, charming, fun, but will be there when you need them. It's as if there's a maturity there and there's a ability to understand other people's feelings. So this person uses, then remember this person's very bright. The type of person you fall for is very bright. Sagittarius are very on the ball in many things. You can't really, that's why you get so many lawyers at Sagittarius. I know you need Virgo as well, but there's that, they're very good at cutting through arguments very quickly and seeing the point. And I wonder whether this person is very similar but it's definitely Mr. Darcy, not the Mr. Darcy, Mr. Mark Darcy out of the Bridget Jones film. I haven't watched that for years. I watched it last week. There's, that's the feeling from both of these. One's the lawyer who uses, use, knows how to use their mind correctly and it's got that sort of ability to love somebody else. But you may not see them as exciting as Daniel Cleaver. Yeah, definitely that, these, that feeling is very much within these piles here. 
there's going to be what I would say a feisty get together. There's going to be some sort of emotionally charged, sexually charged meeting where I wonder whether you may not, you may, ah, you may be seeing this person, this person as this person. So you're going to be given this. You're going to be given that me, 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 me. And, um, you know, trying to be a little bit sassy with them when really they'd be like, you know, don't do it to me because I'm not like that. And what you need to do is basically calm it down a little bit. You can still play, but calm it down a little bit. I thought it was an interesting pile. I'd love to know if any of this was true because in my head now I have gone through a film, um, an old turmoil in my life obviously some sort of scarring event from my childhood which is basically adolescent childhood um, and it's given me a real what I feel is a good picture for whoever this may resonate with because it just feels interesting to me I'm not saying my reading's interesting but it's interesting me because it to me the picture is becoming a little bit fuller and I would love to know if this resonates with anybody because to me it feels interesting um i don't mean i'm not being vain interesting i just want to know interesting because it's it's to me why it is interesting is the growth of the person and then it's interesting because you're expecting this and then you you're going to get something else but there's a similarity there so you're going to want to fight with it which is causing the contention here but it's actually going to be part of the sexual pull and the sexual excitement in the relationship and you've just got to give that to be able to get to this you've got to be down to earth practical and be steady with it rather than flying off the handle and being defensive to get to this person or this personality to draw this person towards you good luck Good luck there, pie number three. I'm going to finish there. And thank you for joining me today. Um, I don't know if that's taken too long, but... Hey, I don't know what to say there. <laughs> thank you again. Hope to see you again. Bye. <laughs>